Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a brand new series. We're going to be doing a draft to glory. Done this a couple of times over on GM Games and it's a lot of fun and I wanted to give it a whirl here on my channel. Basically what we do is any player on our team needs to be acquired via draft. Whether it's the International Amateurs, the Rule 5 Draft, or the Rule 4 First Year Player Draft. No trades. We can trade players for cash. Um, and there can be nobody on our team that wasn't drafted by our organization. So Episode 1 is likely just to be a sort of a culling, so to speak, of all of our big league, of all of our rosters. And I went and, and I went with Kansas City Royals, and I'll, I'll kind of give you my... my the, my reasonings here in a second, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go team by team and I am going to look at their history. And if they weren't, and if it says they were, they were drafted by a team other than the Royals, they're just going to get cut. So I'm going to be in commissioner mode uh, here at the beginning. And I am going to go through and I am going to get rid of every single player on our roster uh, in our system that doesn't uh, show that they were drafted by us. Um, so that will be episode one. So let's, uh, let's take a look at our lineup and we just, we literally are just going to go player by player. This may not be uber exciting. So in fact, what I may do is I may do most of this offline. We may do the big league team here, uh, initially, uh, I'll do the, the, the big league team and maybe triple a on camera and then the rest of it I'll do offline and then I'll come back. So Matt Duffy. And we are, we're not going to release because we don't want to, we're not going to take the, uh, we're not going to take the, um, the, uh, uh, the salary. Like I don't want to retain the salary if I don't have to. So we basically are just going to go position by position. Drafted by the Royals, Freddie Fermin, uh, signed as a minor league free agent. Kyle Isbell is with the Royals. Nikki Lopez, I believe is also with the Royals. Michael Massey with the Royals. MJ Melendez with the Royals. Edward Oliveris signed as an international amateur with Toronto. So we will go ahead and get rid of him. See, I'll probably do, like I said, the big league roster, maybe AAA, and then we'll come back and we'll do the rest of the team. So we know Fran Mil Reyes was not, uh, not a member of, or not drafted by the Royals, so... I didn't want to put him on Arizona. I wanted to release him. All right. And I think everybody else, right? Sal Perez was a draftee of yeah, internationally amateur. Pasquantino, I believe, was as well. Yep. And then, obviously, Bobby Witt. So there's our, our initial lineup, which isn't bad. So the reason I went with, with Kansas City was because they had a, um, a handful of young players that you can build around, most notably Bobby Witt, right? You build around your your stud shortstop. Um, but they got a couple of decent pieces, and we got Vinny Pasquantino, who can hit it first, uh, Kyle Isbell, Nicky Lopez, who's an elite shortstop. So a couple of decent uh, pieces to build around here. The pitching staff is going to be a bit of an issue, um, just based off of, yeah, so Scott Barlow's got to go. Just based off of what I know of the Kansas City pitching staff, they don't have much in the way of homegrown pitching. I think Jonathan Bolin is a homegrown. Yep, Kansas City. Chris Bubich, Kansas City. Chapman, we can get rid of him. So what I'll probably do, like I said, is I'll do the rest of the, um, the, rest of the minor leagues offline and then, you know, come back and, and sim... Uh, it's in the first year. Uh, Taylor Clark's got to go. Uh, Dylan Coleman. Drafted by the Royals, so he's got to go. Yeah, and you can start to see what's going what, to what's gonna end up happening here, right? We're going to have um, just an absolutely atrocious pitching staff. Uh, Amir Garrett, uh, get rid of him. Now, I was thinking about this when I was looking at the Kansas City pitching staff. So Zach Greinke, 
And you know what? Let's get back to Zach in a minute. We'll, we'll look at Zach when we get to the end. It was Carlos Hernandez. He was an international guy. Brad Keller. Uh, drafted, traded to Cincinnati. So Brad Keller's got to go. Uh, Jordan Lyles, I think, has to go as well. Yep. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. I did this a couple years ago with the Texas Rangers over on GM Games, and I was able to actually win... Uh, the World Series with that Rangers team. It took some pretty uh, pretty insane TCR on some of our players, but we were able to make it work. All right, so Brady Singer can hang around. Josh Stalmont, Kansas City. Josh Taylor, no, he was a member of the Red Sox. All right, so that is our big league team right now. Oh, and you know, before we go any further, let's go in and let's make sure we set up the league settings. So one thing that I'm going to do is let's change all the stuff that, that we know we that, that we change all the time anyway. Uh, we're going to allow trading of players. None of this matters because we don't want to set trading frequency on, on very low because I don't really care. Um yeah, draft is fine. Uh, I wanted to... I want to bump uh, TCR to 115. Uh, that gives us a shot with some of those um, lower minor league players. AI settings. So I'm going to leave both of these in the middle. I'm going to leave trading difficulty in the middle. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I have the ability to trade players for cash. That's, you know, if I want to move a player on my roster, I have the ability to trade them for cash. And I don't want to be trading, you know, a 60 overall player for 50 grand. I want to get somewhat realistic cash amounts back from the other team. We're going to leave hard mode off for this. And I don't really care about the trade deadline. Uh, we will reset this to 40, 35, 25, and 5. Uh, I think those are the only changes we need to make from a game perspective. If there's something else you think I missed, let me know. Global settings, 20 to 80, uh, 20 to 80, increments of 5. Um, save once a month so that I don't have to worry about it. Um... Let's also do I want to do What am I looking for? This. Uh I don't I don't think we're going to do automatic evolution. I'm not concerned about any of that. So we'll turn that off for this. I think that's everything. So if there's something you think I missed, let me know. All right, let's go take a look at our AAA team. Omaha Storm Chasers. So we got Darian Blanco traded. He's got to go. Jimmy Govern. Kansas City. Tucker Bradley. Kansas City. Mikhail Garcia. Kansas City. Okay, so Guzman's got to go. Often, I believe, is a Royal. Yep. Logan Porter, Royal. Jackson Reitz, I don't think he's a Royal. Yeah, he's got to go. Wait, what did I see there? Yeah, Nationals, okay. Uh, Samad Taylor, he was a J, right? Traded for Whit Merrifield. Merrifield would have been a nice player to have in a draft of glory just because he can play so many different positions that you don't necessarily have to worry about um, 
not having a shortstop or you know having to call somebody up from single A because it's the best option you have. And that ultimately may be what we end up having to do here with with some of our some of our other positions. Brisenio is a free agent. We're gonna have a lot of single A players in our, our high majors, and we may even have some in triple A, in the majors rather. And Nick Prado is a Royal. Okay, so there's the lineup. Let's start take a looking. Start to take a look at the pitching. So Max Castillo was part of the Whit Merrifield deal. Austin Cox. Kansas City it was a Quayus. Uh, nope, he's got to go. So you can see why I'm going to do the rest of these teams offline. This is just going to take forever. Um, no history data found, so we'll leave them. If there's no history data found, I think they're. I think it's fair game to leave them where they are. Alec Marsh, he's good. Jackson Coar, I believe, is a Royal. Yep, first round. Marcelo Martinez, free agent. Drew Parrish, Kansas City. TJ Sikama. Uh, traded for Benintendi. Okay. So he gets released. We're going to have bad pitching staff. Drew Parrish, Kansas City. Veneziano. Kansas City, Nick Whitgren, not Kansas City. I knew that. And Yarborough. Yeah, not Kansas City. He's going to say play for Tampa. All right. So that is the AAA team. So now I got to go through and I got to do that for every other minor league. Thankfully, there are only a handful. So I will be back when I am done and we will get to the start of this new Let's Play. I'll be right back. Hey guys, we're back, and I'm a dummy. Uh, I did a bunch of uh, house keep, housekeeping kind of stuff, and uh, forgot to press record. So we're at opening day, um, and the thing, all I've done, all you missed me do was paperworky stuff. I signed all almost all new coaches, every single one of our coaches in every um, minor league location has uh, at least decent uh, player development. Um, I fired anybody who was below decent and hired in new younger coaches at almost every single level. Uh, brought in an entirely new coaching staff uh, in the big leagues. Brought in the GOAT. Brought in RJ Harrison on a two-year contract with the hope that um, a new scout is auto-generated who highly favors tools who's better than him. And if not, I will go in and we'll hire somebody else on a short-term deal. And we'll keep doing that until we... We land somebody that uh, that we like and we want to hold on to. Uh, I have our scout working on uh, a ton of different things right now. He's got you know like a hundred players. He's got a scout, all of our big leaguers, and all of our good prospects. Um, I have reset our minors. I have uh, disabled AI promotion for anybody who looks even remotely average or above average. Uh, because they didn't want the AI to stick all of them in AAA. You can see it put a, it put some players in AAA that are pretty bad. And that's fine. Like, I would rather you have the bad players in AAA uh, and let my younger players develop where they need to develop. Um, so, Noah Murdoch, I think. I like the extreme ground ball, so I think we're going to disable and send him to AAA as well. Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty much all we did. Uh, that's pretty much all you missed. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, clicking and, and moving stuff around. So yeah, uh, entirely new coaching staff. Um, we set our lineups, we set our roster, you see our pitching staff, Granke, Singer, Buba, Hernandez, Jackson, Coar is our starting rotation. Our bullpen is made up of a lot of, uh, really, really bad, uh, players. Um, the rule five is someplace I think we can make a lot of hay, uh, in the bullpen, but that'll be, um, that'll be, uh next episode that won't be something we do here yeah our pitching staff's really bad it's it's going to be a bad year from a from a pitching perspective offensively i don't think we're terrible right we can build around wit pasquantino massey like those aren't three bad names to to work around nick prado if he develops um 
He's got some pop in his bat. It's a possibility. But at least starting with Bobby Witt at short and starting kind of, right, starting from up the middle with, with your shortstop, your center fielder, Kyle, Kyle Isbell is a good defensive center fielder. Maybe not a great hitter. He's good defensively. And then obviously Sal Perez behind the plate, uh, at least for another handful of years since we can't, uh, you know, the money's not going anywhere, so we can't trade him. So just hang on to it. Um, yeah, so MJ Melendez isn't terrible. Good, good, good. I mean, if the ratings, if those are his ratings, he should be pretty good out in right field. So we've got some decent offensive talent. Our pitching staff is a train wreck. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see what the draft does because you don't normally draft via need in Major League Baseball, right? But we may spend the first couple of drafts going, what do we need to do to improve our offense? And, and that's kind of how we'll be looking at it. We will be drafting eighth this season. Um, first couple drafts, as everybody knows, aren't terrific, you know, so we'll, we'll do the best we can. Um, but if we're picking eighth... Yeah, Skeens won't be available. Dollander won't be available. Those are the two big names. Um, Waldrop isn't a bad kind of third option at age 21. Uh, he could be our ace within a couple of years, but we'll see. Christian Little doesn't look terrible. Got to get some scouting on these guys, though. So, in fact... Let's request scouting reports on them. And I think we move them to the top of our list. Cruz, yeah. I mean, getting someone like Dylan Cruz would be awesome. It's not going to happen. But getting someone like Dylan Cruz would be electric. Let's get the scouting reports on these guys. All right. So I am now going to sim up to the draft. So the way we're going to do this at these episodes is we will do full season. So I'm going to sim up to the draft. We'll come back. We'll do the draft. I'll pause again. I'll sim to the end of the season. We'll recap. We'll look at our... our um, uh, look at our uh, draftees, uh, and then that will be the end of the season, sim through the postseason and whatnot. Uh, and then next episode will be the off season, which basically will consist of the Rule 5, uh, and then we will get on to the next season. So that is what we are going to do. So I will see you guys on draft day. Be right back. All right, guys, it is draft time. And the Royals, honestly, were playing pretty well. Uh, we were 500. Up until about a week and a half ago when we lost both Bobby Witt and Vinny Pasquantino on essentially the same day. Um, and we've lost, I don't know, a bunch of games in a row. I haven't really been paying much attention to the streaks. But, yeah, we've lost eight in a row. Yeah, we were 41 and 42 when the month of July started. Uh, there's been some good. Most notably, MJ Melendez is absolutely raking. 943 OPS, 156 OPS plus, 3.3 war playing an average right field. He's been really, really good. Bobby Witt Jr., not a bad second season. He was going to be slightly up in most of his counting numbers from last season, but he's going to miss the next month, so we'll see. Uh, Vinny Pasquantino, um, yeah, 788 OPS. He was looks like he's going to come up a little bit short, too, now that he's out for the next three weeks. Uh, and other than that, it's been a lot of average. Excuse me, we're not... Uh, not going to dive too deeply into stats right now just because the, um, uh, what am I, where is, where are my stats here? None. There we go. Um, I'm not going to dive too, too deep, deeply into the stats because we aren't anticipating that we're going to win anything this year, right? So, um, you know, it's it's more looking at the players who might potentially be able to help us down the road more than anything else. Uh, Michael Massey's negative war because he's a bad fielder, but he's putting up some decent offensive numbers, 752 OPS. Um, Tucker Bradley probably forced to the majors a little bit too early because we didn't have a left fielder. He's holding his own, league average. But other than that, it's been a lot of average to below average with the bat. And pitching, as anticipated, has not been great. It hasn't been as bad as I thought. Brady Singer's actually having a pretty darn good season. He's 8-7 and seven with a 307 ERA. Uh, 355 FIP, 139 ERA plus. He's been pretty good. Jackson Coar, not awful. Not awful. Um, Angel Zerpa, uh, we just called him up. Or didn't call him up. He came back. He was injured. And we brought him up. And he's doing really nicely out of the bullpen for us. A 207 ERA plus. He's probably a starter. 
But for now, I'll leave the 23-year-old in the bullpen. And, uh, yeah, so that's kind of where we are from a, a statistical standpoint. Um, none of our – we haven't had any huge TCR yet. A couple players have gotten a little bit better. I think Gavin Cross looks like he got a little better across the board. Uh, we had a reliever who looked like he got better too. Uh, where is he? Yeah, Nunez. Looks like he got a little better too. No, I guess he didn't. He must have been hurt, and I just didn't notice him because with 65 movement, I would like to have think I would like to think that I would have him on the uh, on the roster. But yeah, Gentry got a little worse, but he's still sort of our our top guy right now. Um, now yeah, it's time for the draft. So let's get to drafting. We are picking eighth. So let's see how this goes. Obviously, the 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 big names are uh, Skeens and Dollinger. Uh, Dollinger, rather. Uh, we're not likely to get either of them, but let's see how this goes. Pittsburgh takes Paul Skeens. Dylan Cruz goes to the Nationals. Wyatt Langford to the Tigers. Jacob Gonzalez. Oh, so we're picking eighth? Is that what I said? So Oakland and Sam, one of them is going to take Dollander. One of them has to take Dollander. Yeah, there he goes to the Twins. All right. And now the A's take Max Clark. So, oh, it's Cincinnati's turn. Okay. Cincinnati will take Aiden Miller. Oh, wow, he looks good. All right. Who does our scout think we should take? George Lombard Jr., uh, listed as a shortstop. He's not a shortstop. He's a second baseman. I'm not taking that second baseman with our first pick. Let's immediately go to pitching potential. Waldrop is kind of the guy I was thinking about um, initially. The overall increased a bit. Nothing has dropped. His movement has spiked over the last year a little. His stuff and his movement have stayed steady for the last month or so. Um, yeah, I mean, Skeens is, or Waldrop's probably the pick. Um, just want to see if there's any, but Hackman hasn't been a bad, not a bad pick in the past. But I think Skeens is, or well, I keep calling him Skeens. I mean, Skeens obviously is the better player, but Hurston Waldrop is probably that guy. Let's see what's available for batters just to make sure we're making the right pick here. Yeah, I mean, we've done this so many times now already with, with Out of the Park 24 that we we're kind of know what we're looking at, right? Like George Walco is a third baseman who has some power. Gen I mean, I haven't seen him develop in any any play any playthrough I've done, but that's our first, I think that's where we're going to go with pick number one. It's going to be Hurston Waldrep, the 21-year-old out of southern mississippi so we're gonna go ahead and take him with our top pick let's just look at colton emerson cold emerson real quick yeah we're gonna take 21 year old hurston waldrop with our top pick now second pick we still got batanti there still got walco there what do we have for pitchers hackman's still there he wants eight million dollars though i don't think we haven't what's our did i Ugh, is that something I forgot to do? Well, I know it's something I forgot to do, but is it going to come back and bite us? Yeah, draft budget needs to be higher. Okay, so that's the most we can do there. That's fine. Um, am I still in commissioner mode? I am. Let's get out of that. All right. So, okay. Okay. Uh, first year player draft. Continue the draft. Uh, yeah, Hawkman would be nice, but and we don't have another $8 million to spend. Bryce Eldridge wants $8 million. Obel Meyer wants 8 and a half. Liam Peterson wants 9 <clears throat> Ty Floyd wants 1.4. Four potentially good pitches. Cameron Johnson... The changeup at a 25 tells me that it might develop. Charlie Soto wants $9 million. Wow. Some of these guys want a lot of cash. Tanner Hall wants 
He's not terrible. I don't know that I want to take him in the second round. Christian Little. I always like Christian Little. I think I might wait and see if he's there in the third round, though. Let's look at some batters. We got Patanti, who's listed as a third baseman here, which is nice. He's usually listed as a shortstop, which he can't actually play. I mean, he and Walco are basically the same player. 50, 55, 60. It looks like Walco projects to be a little better. Not much. 50, 60, 65. No, actually, it looks like Batanti looks to be the better player, at least here. And Antonio Anderson, listed as a shortstop, not a shortstop. Man, I feel like I've seen these names a thousand times. Um, it's just a matter of which ones are going to develop this time, right? I mean, that's really where we are with it. Colin Houck looks okay. I think we're going to take one of those third basemen, although they've never developed for me. So it's maybe we go somewhere different. Maybe we go Lombard. Maybe we go George Lombard this time because I've never taken him. I always end up taking Walco or Batanti, and it always comes back to bite me. So we're going to take George Lombard with our second pick. Uh, let's go back to pitchers. I think Cameron Johnson is the guy now. 6'5", 230-pound lefty. Already throws 94 to 96. Potential elite fastball slider and a passable changeup. 60, 55, 50. I'm good with that. And he's fairly cheap. Who do they think we should take in round four? Andrew Wiggins, a right fielder who's not really a right fielder. It's not a bad bat, but he's not really a right fielder. Little is still there. I don't want to wait too long on Christian Little. In fact, I think I'm going to take him here. He already has three developed pitches. I think we're going to take Christian Little here. Let's go to batters now. Antonio Anderson, that may be the pick. Again, a second baseman, but that's a decent, that's a good enough bat, I think. Antonio Anderson, we'll take him. I am recording, right? I am recording, yes. All right. Next pick, we can start looking at defense. See about landing. Yeah, our boy isn't... Uh, those of you who are on our Discord know that we are the RJ Mayer fan club. And uh, uh, the most recent patch broke RJ. So he's no longer that 80 to outfield range. We got Max Marusak. Good defensively. Yeah, you don't start getting a lot of those elite defensive players in the first until, like, you know, second or third draft. But then you start getting worse, like, players. First couple drafts are not particularly good. Take Lane Forsyth. I mean, he's a shortstop. He's got the shortstop range. Good eye, good uh, good plate discipline. Uh, let's look at individual... Pay oh, let's look at catcher ability. Yeah, there's not much in the first... Gabriones is somebody I like to take. It's a baseball rat. I do have personality on, right? Oh, I didn't. Interesting. Take Gabriones here. Need some good catchers in our minor league system to catch the hundreds of pitchers we're going to draft. Uh, Forsyth is still there. We can take him now. Get some good defensive players. Let's go to our next pick. Jerrion Ely. The bat never develops for Jerrion, but he's a good defensive outfielder. We go Mo Hampton, though. He's listed as a 20 overall, 20 potential, but, I mean, he's got some good gap power, good home run power, good eye and discipline, and he's a good outfielder, so maybe. Maybe the bat develops and he turns into something. You know, that's one of the things we got to keep an eye on, right? We got to hope 
that we get some TCR from some of these some of these draftees. Two Zach's only 18, high work ethic, 65, shortstop ability. I'll take him. Let's go to individual pitch potential. Believe there's a knuckleballer in this first class. There's not. What about the circle change? Yeah, Sajowski's always on there, but his ratings are. Well, his ratings aren't terrible in this one. Colin Sajowski, that's better than I've seen him in other games. He's got that circle change, which is always a good pitch, so we'll take him. All right, what do we got? Caleb Appleby's another player I always take. I think the ratings are good enough out of the shoot. Um, high loyalty, high intelligence, 55 stamina. I think he could be okay. Adam Boucher. 30 changeup. Yeah, we can take Adam Boucher. Let's see if there's... Oh, I think we got to take Mr. Eknis just for... I don't want to say the memes, but this was the player, those of you who haven't watched my other... Um, uh, draft to glories. Josh Eknis was a 24th round draft pick uh, with the Texas Rangers, and he developed into one of the best pitchers in the American League. Couldn't stay healthy, but he developed into one of the best pitchers in the American League and was part of that team that won the World Series. Therese Butcher, 21-year-old, high work ethic, yep. Cotto doesn't look bad. 6'4 lefty. Somebody took him. So they agreed with my assessment. Oh, no, they didn't. He's right here. Jack Crowder. And we'll take Cotto. And then I'll look at Crowley there. Garrett Crowley. Yeah. All right, let's go to batters. What do we have left? Corey Collins, decent bat, but no glove. Jaden Bastain. He looks all right. Oh, he's an impossible sign. Um, Parks Harbor. He's really underdeveloped for a 21-year-old, which isn't good. Kulikowski with the low, uh, low work ethic. Are there any pitchers that have... Claire Drake 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 Bowen okay 19 year old high work ethic he's not a shortstop but 19 year old with high work ethic that's fine 55 potential contact Caden what is with these names man Caden that's not how you spell Caden low work ethic oh he's also an impossible sign Luca Reyes Yep, I'll take Luca. High work ethic. People love him. He's 18. Keanu Rodriguez. There's a name. But I'm going to take him. High leader, high loyalty. Decent enough defensively. Let's draft another catcher, shall we? What do we got going on? High leader, low greed. No. Fernando Gonzalez. He's a bulldog. Sure. It's not my pick. Now it's my pick. Um, we'll take Marusak here with our next pick, assuming he's still there. Yep. Ely is still there. What about Bussy? Eh, yeah, 65. He's 23, though. Whatever. Doesn't matter at this point. You know, at this point, you draft players who have, like, one discernible skill and hope the TCR takes over. That's kind of the plan when you start getting into this point of the draft. We'll take Ely because of the gap power. It's got 65 or something. Two more picks. Infield range. Mm -hmm. 
Zevmore Shore. And the final pick of the trout. No, we're done. We're done. All right. Negotiate, <coughs> excuse me. Negotiate with draftees. Wall drop. Looks like we're going to come in a little under slot across the board, which is good. Save us a bit of cash. Not that we need much cash. We just need enough money to sign our players to arbitration. And, you know, if there's a player that hits free agency that we want, we need to make sure that we are, uh, that we've got the money to do it. So um, that's it for the draft portion. So, guys, now I'm going to sim ahead to the end of the season. We'll get through the postseason. We'll take a look at year one and we'll call it episode one. So, I'll be back again in just a minute. All right. <clears throat> the season is over. We finished 73 and 89 and we have some some real building blocks i think uh i think we're in decent shape oh uh, um what's his name zach ranky retired so he's not here anymore so i can't show you his stats but he wasn't particularly good he was like eight and 19 or something uh offensively mj melendez had a just a fantastic season 31 home runs put up a 950 ops um yeah, making the minimum. You love it. Bobby Witt, but a, f a four and a half war in 129 games. The 24 home runs, 30 stolen bases. So we've got really, I would say, four pieces on our big league roster right now that I think will be part of that, you know, first real push. Five, if you include Nicky Lopez because of his defense. I mean, just defensively, he's so elite. But. Melendez, Witt, Isbell, and Pasquantino. If on a good team, Kyle Isbell is uh, just an outstanding. I mean, he put up a good year for us at the leadoff spot. But on a on a on a contending team, Isbell is is a great great weapon in center field. So we have some good pieces. He had a good year, three and a half WAR. Lopez, Pasquantino, and then from there it was you know Eaton, ten home runs, nineteen stolen bases. Uh, Sal Perez. Um, Captain, incredibly popular. Again, he's under contract for another three years after this one. Uh, Tucker Bradley rushed to the majors a little bit, ended up struggling mightily. Uh, Massey did not have a, a great first year, but that contact is still there. Uh, still looks like a decent enough bat. Um, so there are some pieces offensively. Pitching, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, there's no one here that, uh, you know, I think maybe, excuse me, maybe Zerpa. As a back of the rotation guy, I don't know. I mean, he had a good year, but I don't think there's a single pitcher here that that I say will be part of you know that first real playoff push that we make. Uh, prospect perspective, um, starting AAA, we got Mikhail Garcia. Uh, he's likely up with the team last year. He got a cup of coffee and was awful this year. Uh, he may come up next year and be our backup middle infielder. I'm not entirely sure yet. Uh, Daryl Collins. Gentry had a, a really nice year in AAA. 38 home runs, 105 RBIs. So he's probably up as our starting left fielder next year. Uh, Luca Tresh. Uh, good year. 24 home runs, 91 RBIs. He's probably up as a backup catcher slash first baseman. The infield range slash left field, I guess. Uh, and he's not great, but, you know, for what we have, he'll be... He'll be uh, we'll find a home for him. Double A, Eric Sarantola had a nice um, nice uh, uh, talent bump uh, in the middle of the year. You can see um, the stuff spiked here in May, uh, as well as the movement. The control dipped a bit, but uh, yeah, the potential movement went up, potential uh, stuff went up, so that's nice. Um, Lisandro Rodriguez had a good year in Double A, but I don't know that he's got much of a future. Same with Caden Wallace, had a good year. Uh, and then Peyton Wilson, probably have him up in AAA next year. Had a good year in double, a really good year in double A. Uh, we get into single A, and we got Gavin Cross. Good year in single A. He'll probably start in double next year. Another corner outfielder. We got like four or five of these guys who are all kind of the same. So hopefully at least one of them develops. And once we get into A ball, that's where the fun starts. So Hurston Waldrip has already seen uh, a bump to his overall and his potential. Uh, his potential control impro improved. 
Uh, and he was really, really good in A ball in six starts. Struck out 45 in 29 innings. Uh, he probably starts in A ball next year, finishes in high A or maybe double A. We'll see what the develop, we'll see what sort of development happens in the offseason. But he's the number 17 prospect in baseball. Carter Jensen, uh, catching prospect, who's got a really solid bat. Uh, I don't know if he's going to catch enough to be a starter, but um, really good bat there. Rookie ball, Lombard's ratings, I think already dipped a bit. Yeah. Well, no, I guess they didn't. They've been kind of right where they were when we drafted him. Um, and then the rest of these guys, Anderson was bad. Uh, Cameron Johnson is a top 200 prospect right now. I think he sits at 186-ish. Um, had a good start to his career. Uh, just 18 years old, big kid. Excited about what we're going to get there. Uh, Christian Little. Same deal, high work ethic. Uh, he probably starts an A ball next year since he's at 40, 30, 30. Um, but we'll see what happens with development in the offseason. So, yeah, excited about Waldrop. Really happy. Uh, could potentially be our ace of the future if that control does does end up at a 45. Already three plus pitches. Uh, already throwing 96 to 98 at age 21. So, uh, he could be that stud top of the rotation guy that we need. Um, Nothing. I don't think anybody was really signed during the uh, during the season for us. Arturo Padilla was signed in April. That was about it. Yeah. Yep. And then we had this guy Maltman, Blake Maltman, out of Australia, signed him in September. So that's gonna do it, guys. So the one question I have for you: waivers. Do I get? Do I have the ability to to, to pick from the waiver wire? I would say no. Because it's not really a draft, but I'm curious what you guys think. Oh, I called a game with C.J. Carter in it last night, actually. <laughs> he pitches for the Kane County Cougars in real life. Uh, and he struck out two. Struck out two in one inning. So that's interesting. I like it when I see stuff like that. So let me know what you think, guys. Can I, can I draft from the waiver wire? And do I have the ability to... Um, uh, to take players from other leagues. Like if I go to the American Association and I go to batting potential and I find some stud bat that's sitting in the American Association, can I sign him? I would say no, but I'm curious what you guys think. So some odd Taylor, we cut him and he ended up playing for Lexington of the Atlantic Association, the legends. So yeah, let me know what you think, guys. Dude, can I... Uh, waiver wire and um, other leagues. Can I sign free agents from independent ball? So let me know what you guys think. Would this be in video one? As always, drop the video a like, subscribe, leave a comment, etc., etc. Um, and we'll be back with another video fairly soon. This, uh, this is something I've been looking forward to doing, and I was chatting about it on Discord as as sort of a uh, uh, you know, should I do this? Should I get this started now? And I just decided to do it. Figured what the hell. So I got some time over the next week and a half. So that is going to do it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support, as always. And we will talk soon. Bye-bye.